Okay, time for an actual Help Wanted 2 theory video. I know technically my first Help Wanted 2 video was only loosely related to it, but this one's gonna be all about that game. Specifically, a piece of the game that I feel is just a little overlooked, and a piece of the game that definitely requires some form of answer and understanding. Today, I'm talking about the gameplay of Help Wanted 2. Let me explain. In Help Wanted 2, you've been hired on as an apparently new employee entering their training at Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. We're told in the trailer, as well as on a PlayStation blog post, that we're training to specifically discover what area of the Pizzaplex staff we may want to specialize in. Do we want to be health and security, or a technician, or a gamer? But regardless, this makes the entire game essentially an entry interview of sorts. However, about halfway through the game we get a faz wrench, and the truth is actually revealed. We're not just working here at the Pizzaplex in its heyday, we're here after the place collapsed, likely before Ruin, but after Security Breach. And all these minigames we've been playing have been played through the perspective of a Vanny mask, similar to the one Cassie receives in Ruin. In fact, very, very similar. You might even say the exact same mask, because yeah, it's the exact same mask. All those teaser props at Steel Wool's PAX booth, those weren't just references, they're relevant to this title. So the context seems to be that we're working to do what exactly? Restore the Pizzaplex? Find the Mimic? It's left vague and the ultimate goal isn't exactly obvious, but I think something important to discuss is the actual context through which these training minigames are played. That being, in the AR world, everything seems bright and normal, but in the real world, things are usually not as bright. But are we even sure that this is the real world? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is confirm that it's not. Keep in mind, I'm not saying the hub world is not a real place. But I'm saying every minigame takes place in the AR world, or at least most of them. The first ones we can confirm are any that we know had to have happened before the Pizzaplex was destroyed. This means any minigame where the glam rocks are not shattered or staff bots are working has to be fake. This eliminates a lot of them off the bat. Roxy's makeup, L chips, daycare, all of that. But there's still more. We can also eliminate any minigame where Glitch Trap appears physically. So this includes Phaser Blast FNAF 3. Bonkamon 2, Fizzy Faz Night 3, Foxy's Log Ride, the Movie Theater Snack Counter, and Ballora's Office Level. Since Glitch Trap doesn't have a physical form, we can eliminate all of these as levels that take place in the real world. Or at least, these levels are augmented by the Vanny Mask. In fact, a pretty big piece of this puzzle is Jacko Moon, a brand new character to this game and one I dislike because his name is a lie. Sun spikes are out, no moon hat, this is Jacko's son. Anyway, this character obviously doesn't exist in the real world of the Pizzaplex, so his appearances have to be within the AR world. The same could also be said for Mystic Hippo, Carney, and Dreadbear, all of whom are characters we've only ever seen in virtual or augmented reality. None of them have a real world robot that they're based on. But even still, a lot of these minigames seem to be telling us something. For example, we now know that our character is the one to give Roxy her mask that she wears in Ruin. No. Just give me that mask and get out! The mask... The mask is fine! Now leave me alone! I need to think. Where could he be hiding? If this is the case though, does that mean that this level takes place in reality? I don't think so. It's worth noting that the AR mask doesn't bring you to a new world, it just changes the one you're in. So, it's still totally feasible that this level is in the AR world. It's hard to explain, but think of it like this. Every level of Help Wanted 2 on some level has been changed from reality, whether it be entirely fictional or something minor. For example, I do think Jacko Moon is probably just Moon, but with the Vanny mask altering his appearance, it makes him look like this. But there's a set of levels that are just very hard to explain, and that's the sister location levels. Since we get one of the memories from this part of the game, we can't disregard it as unimportant. So what's really happening here? Are we actually back in the sister location, or are we somewhere else? Well, my friend, I'm willing to bet that it's a bit of both. You see, one of Ruin's three endings always seemed to be a bit odd as to what it actually meant. By opening up a correct sequence of doors, Cassie could lure the Mimic through a long hallway into a scooping room, Similar, but not completely the same, as the one seen in Sister Location. For some reason, one of the secret endings of Ruin was teasing a game we'd already played some years ago. And I think this secret ending is our answer. The Pizzaplex wasn't just built over the old pizza place, 
It was built over the sister location bunker. All these sister location levels are possible because they're happening just below your feet at the start of the game, with the Vanny mask allowing you to see what it looked like during its heyday. Hey, that's the second time I've used that word. If this is the case, it explains a lot. It explains why a lot of ruins seem to be teasing sister location content, even if it didn't make sense to revisit that game from a story perspective. It explains why the scooper is down there. It even explains the presence of plush babies in ruin, because those plush babies appear to people who have worn the Vanny mask. Recontextualizing ruin as the fallout of the events of Help Wanted 2 definitely makes things more interesting if you ask me. Like, this could explain why we never see Burn Trap in Ruin, but we do see the Mimic. At the end of Help Wanted 2, our player character watches Glitch Trap come out of a charging pod, and then our character becomes Maskbot, and gives the Vanny Mask to Cassie. Well, let's look at this from the perspective that the Burn Trap ending didn't happen in Security Breach, and it was instead the Princess Quest ending. Notably, this means Burn Trap would still be down there in the pizza place, where our character spends the majority of their time. You seeing Glitch Trap emerging from a charging pod could be us seeing Burn Trap escape. This would explain how Gregory would have seen Burn Trap and drawn him, but Burn Trap also is nowhere to be found when Cassie goes down there. My friends, he may have done it again. That wacky Afton bunny could be a Robocorps hybrid running down the street again. Just make sure to keep your kids inside. So we've established pretty heavily that the gameplay of Help Wanted 2 is likely all taking place while your character is wearing the Vanny mask twisting reality around you to make you see things that aren't really there. But the question I then have is, why? What is the context behind these minigames? Well, first off, they're all really, really fun. Multiple times on stream, I made a fool out of myself with how good a time I was having. That's definitely related to the lore, totally. But on the other side of things, why does Glitchtrap need to see if I'm good at Bonkabon before he turns me into a mask bot? Well, I mean, let's be real. Your character is still on a payroll, and they are still there to do a job. In fact, this is probably why your character is the one that was picked. If the trailer can be trusted, then the player character is likely only on their second week of the job. They're a new face, one that could probably be manipulated into playing these minigames under the guise of training and never question it. What we should really be asking though is what the hell the supposed good ending actually means. So let me lay it out for you. The steps to get the good ending and what my interpretation is. In order to get the good ending, you need to first acquire six memories that take the form of these gross dolls wearing masks of classic FNAF characters. There's a doll for Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Golden Freddy, and the Puppet, which coincides with the figures you can get as well. To get the Puppet, you need to go to Ballora's office level and open the drawer on your left. Inside will be a keypad, which you need to type 1983 into. From here, Glitchtrap's hand will reach from the drawer and give you the Puppet. To get Golden Freddy, you need to mix the Sodaroni beverage, and then one of every ingredient except salt, into the container, while on lockdown. Send it up and, just like last time, Glitchtrap will give you a Golden Freddy plush. With Foxy, you need to board the log flume ride and hit the three blue splat marks hidden in each of the three dark courses. This will lead you to a treasure chest where Glitchtrap will give you Foxy. For Bonnie, you need to reach the bonus level of Bonkabon and hit the Glitchtrap puppet then plug the code into the machine in reverse. Glitchtrap's hand will come from one of the holes and hand you a Bonnie plush. Chica's is the easiest. To get her plush, you need to throw one of each Chica-themed food item into the trash can on your left in the movie theater. From the trash, your next plush rises. Freddy's is the hardest, most incomprehensible to get, by like, a wide margin. To get this one, you need to first shoot a rocket in the Wild West level, and then another in the FNAF 1 level. This will set up the basis for the fire that has to happen in the FNAF 2 level. In order to make the fire start, you need to eliminate a majority of the animatronics during the night. I stuck with just the ones in the vent and this worked out totally fine for me. A fire will start and destroy the Phaser Blast set, allowing you to play the secret level, Phaser Blast FNAF 3. Simply beat this one and destroy the Springtrap cutout and Glitchtrap will hand you your Freddy plush. Now grab the Mystic token from Mystic Hippo and you can play Princess Quest 4. When playing, you'll suddenly find the princess in the same room as you. You can transport into the game and wield her sword yourself, in a pretty cool final sequence as you traverse a 3D Princess Quest level. What you see at the end of this level though is the big thing I want to unravel. You're in a giant claw machine, where Moon descends and you give him a Glitchtrap plush, the same one from Help Wanted, and the same one seen in Princess Quest 3. Vanny retrieves Glitchtrap, who puts his hands up in self-defense only for Vanny to crush him into a green blood cloud, 
She then retreats into the dark, and the game is over. It should be noted as well that after you start the game again from this point, Helpy is gone, meaning he was yet another manifestation of Glitchtrap, just like he was in Ruin. So what does this mean for Vanny, and what does this mean for the player? Some have interpreted this ending as the player being trapped inside the machine essentially forever, since the credits just roll. In my opinion, that's not the case since you can just keep playing the game and notice that Helpy is gone. I think that this ending is meant to show us why Vanny wasn't in Ruin. As we saw in Security Breach, the Princess Quest cabinets are tied directly to Vanny, as it's beating Princess Quest 3 that sets Vanessa free. I think Help Wanted 2 tells us that she wasn't completely out of the woods. It requires us, an additional hand, to beat that last cabinet, one that didn't exist in the real world, but did exist in the augmented reality. This is what sets Vanessa free fully. However, for our character, there is no happy ending. They're trapped, confined to do these tasks for Glitchtrap, and eventually be taken over. Which ending is canon? I think both have a very high chance of being so. However, there's still more for me to talk about. I'm going to use the rest of this video's runtime to talk about what I think the connection is between the character we play as and the Bonnie mask that can be found in the final Princess Quest area. Who do I think we actually play as? For this, I'm going to be referring to multiple theories, some of which I do believe, some of which I'm not as enthusiastic to agree with. For starters, I do think there's a good possibility that we play as Jeremy, the character we presumed was dead in Help Wanted 1. Re-examining the evidence, it's never actually stated that Jeremy died in that game, only that he had been seeing Glitchtrap, had access to a paper guillotine, and that when he was found, his face seemed to be covered in something that resembled ink, and something that looked like a Halloween mask was on the floor. Assuming he's still alive, the ink on his face could have been Agony, which is cited as appearing like black ink, and can even be seen on the cover of Into the Pit. Is it still possible Jeremy cut his face off with a paper guillotine and died in the VR world? Absolutely. But it's now also likely that Jeremy didn't die, but was instead being controlled by Glitchtrap. However, I hesitate on this idea heavily because it goes against another idea that I like just as much. That being that the player character may have been the employee in Security Breach who was bent on glitching the Princess Quest games. From what we can tell, he never accomplished glitching all of them, and was either killed or otherwise disposed. If what Funaf believes is true, then our character could be here with the express purpose of getting to that fourth cabinet. In either scenario, there's the Bonnie mask we have to explain. What is our connection to Bonnie? The first thing I want to say is that I don't believe our character is the Bonnie bully that MatPat proposed a while back. I simply don't think the games would be reaching that far back at this point, especially since there's no other reference to FNAF 4 in this game. At least none that I can find, I'm sure people in the comments will find something not a single nightmare animatronic or plush trap or anything like that in sight. So I think it's better for us to try to think about why a Bonnie mask specifically would have some sort of impact on the player character. And before we do, we need to figure out the puzzle to get that mask. By lighting the graves in a set order, we reveal a staircase that leads underground to the Bonnie mask. The correct order of these graves is Chica, Foxy, Freddy, Bonnie, Golden Freddy, and Puppet. However, each of these graves is also associated with a number. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. By lighting them in this order, the stairs open, so it's basically just, can you count? But why is this important? What does it signify? And why are the memories here? Well, let's rule one thing out immediately. This is not the death order. The order in which Afton's victims died has always been a mystery of sorts. But one thing's for sure. The puppet kinda has to be the first one in order for the rest of the series to even happen. So if that was the case, we would be lighting the puppet graves first, not last. But then do the graves actually mean anything at all? I think what this puzzle alludes to is not a connection to FNAF 4, but a connection to the dead children. And since we're playing as an adult, I don't think it's going to be something as simple as, oh, we're playing as the Bonnie ghost, or something like that. Further, whatever the connection is to the Bonnie mask, I don't think it's necessarily through tragedy. Since we're most likely playing as Vanessa's father, someone who we know loved Bonnie, we need to figure out what the real deal here is. On top of that, it's implied Cassie knows about the Bonnie mask, since when she finds one in Ruin, she asks what happened to you, likely in reference to her father who went missing. Since Cassie is a little girl as well, we can assume this happened fairly recently. But wait, there's more. Let's re-examine Jeremy's supposed death. What does Tape Girl say about the mask on the floor? It looks like a Halloween mask. The very next piece of FNAF content we got was Curse of Dreadbear, a Halloween-themed DLC that introduced us to a ton of masks, including this Bonnie one. This Bonnie mask, which Cassie would then react to, asking about her father. What happened to him? 
Well, here's what I think happened to him. Jeremy was a beta tester for the Fazbear Virtual Experience, where he encountered Glitchtrap. Glitchtrap was able to successfully turn Gregory into a thrall, and had him pick a mask that he would use when working for Glitchtrap. Since Bonnie was Jeremy's favorite, he picked this Bonnie mask that we see in Princess Quest 4. After a long line of offenses, Jeremy ends up being fired, but now he was possessed by Glitchtrap. This definitely seems strange to Cassie, his daughter, who noticed an odd personality shift in Jeremy. Glitchtrap seemed to hold on to Jeremy as a sort of backup in case Vanny was indisposed. When the Pizzaplex fell apart, Jeremy was activated once more and went to work at the Pizzaplex wearing the Vanny mask to help him along the way. His main purpose was not to serve Glitchtrap, however, it was simply to make way for a new apprentice. After being killed by staff bots, his spirit would go on to possess Maskbot, where he would then give the mask to his daughter and keep the cycle going. At least, that's what I think. There are definitely some issues, chief among them being we don't really have a whole lot of evidence. But this is my interpretation anyway. After all, one thing I'm sure many of us can agree on is that Help Wanted 2 is about remembering. Jeremy collects these memory plushies and unites them all in a ring around the Bonnie mask. I think this is him remembering who he was and what happened to him. It's reminding him of Afton's crimes and what this is all really about. Who knows, I could be way off base here, but this is just what I think the answer is. So, we kind of went really far off what the video was originally about, didn't we? I guess that's just what happens in the process. You click one puzzle piece together and the rest just come out of nowhere. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out my last one where I talked about the fantastic horror game Shipwreck 64. I'm Demuted, be sure to subscribe, and peace.